You basically give mice a high-fat Western diet. They become very obese. They have lots of inflammation, lots of senescence in the adipose tissue. Um, but when you when you remove those senescent cells from the adipose tissue, um, their insulin resistance improves, their glucose tolerance improves, because as you age, typically you're not going to have one single disease, you're going to have senescent cells kind of throughout your body. And so a systemic approach allows you to remove these senescent cells in multiple organs um, with a single dose. So these, these therapies we have can activate and proliferate the NKT cells, and then once they're reactivated, they can go and again, remove senescent cells. And it turns out when you do that, even with a single treatment, has a massive impact on resolving both metabolic disease and also fibrotic diseases, and likely many more that can be tested in the future. Sounds very easy, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's a small molecule yeah. that you found. Yeah. And what's doing precisely? Yeah, so what the molecule is doing, it's basically, it's, it's been designed to target and bind to the NKT cell. So there's a receptor on the NKT cell that can recognize the molecule we've made. And when, when you inject the molecule, it goes and binds to that, that T cell, the NKT cell. And when it binds in a certain area, that NKT cell goes, okay, I'm active again, and they proliferate. Um, the good news is the proliferation of the cell is only for about a week. So the, the downside with some of these um, therapies is that if you do too much uh, of a drug volume or you overactivate the immune system, that can also be bad. So you have to, you have to stay within a certain balance. Um, you can't overactivate, you can't underactivate. And so the drugs we have basically, they activate the, the NKT cells in a way that it makes them um, active for about a week. Then after that, they go back to just kind of more normal resting levels. But this receptor, yeah. how did you find it? Uh, you know, there's something out there in the literature that we um, identified that as a place to um, to latch on to, and then you know, from there, it's a lot of chemistry, a lot of you know, trial and error, um, a lot of seeing which one works not just in a mouse but also in a human cell line, and then showing which ones you know are, the, are then the best ones to carry forward into a, a human clinical study. So it just also to rise the efficacy of the IK oh INKT also to rise the efficacy of these T cells. Yeah. Uh, only for one week, yeah. and this is also a wonder. Yeah, it really depends on you know the, the drug itself is important, and the T cells have an ability when you when you, as I say in layman's terms, when you talk to them properly, they respond to you properly. If you have the wrong drug, then they're going to behave differently. So it's, it's about having the right drug, and that's why I say it's a lot of trial and error on these things. But eventually, what we figured out is that there's a drug you can make that will just transiently activate it. And um, what's nice is that the drug we have will work both on a mouse. Um, in vivo study, but also we've tested this on human cell lines for NKT cells and shown that they're very active there as well. And how long lasts the effect? How often yeah. do you have to do this treatment? I guess if they are really activated in such a proper way, yeah. you don't need it to give it to all. Yeah, that's one of the great value propositions here is that um, on the senescent cells in a human being are very slow to accumulate. In a, in a typical setting. So as you age, they're not accumulating every day. It typically takes years, sometimes decades, to actually cause disease. So not, they're not a rapidly accumulating cell. And physiologically, it takes, a, it takes six weeks plus for a cell to even become senescent from a time. It becomes damaged first. It tries to repair itself. If it can't, <clears throat> eventually after about six weeks or so, it'll go into a senescent phase. And, but you need, you need a number of them to accumulate before it's actually a problem. Um, so in, in humans, you know, It'll take years, if not decades, for these things to really accumulate. Um, in a mouse, obviously, you have to get a model it and see, you know, you want to be able to show that you can, that your approach works. So in a mouse, you can model it where you can develop senescence, you know, over a few months instead of years. But, you know, the mice are accelerated in terms of um, their, their um, you know, they, they live a lot less, uh, much fewer years in a, than a human. Um, so in a, in a mouse, you can get it more quickly, but in a human, it's going to be longer. And you need, you need a single dose or only one single dose? Yeah, so the single dose, it looks like that, that's sufficient to resolve disease. Um, eventually, you go back and repeat, depending on the, on the patient, depending on the disease, depending on you know, how, the, how it's progressing. <clears throat> but so far in all our data, we've shown that one single dose will have the effect because the, the immune system knows what to do. It just needs to be kick-started sometimes as we age. And so when you do it, these cells already have an endogenous ability to recognize and remove senescent cells. And so the one dose is, is effective enough on resolving that disease. Do we have to measure your senescence level 
with biomarkers, is it possible? Yeah, so it, in mice it's very possible because you can sacrifice the animals, you can um, look at the tissue that you sacrificed and then stain for senescent cells um, or not. Um, in humans, it's a little more complicated. So um, one possible solution in a human study is you can biopsy fat or adipose from human patients and look at senescent cell signatures um, in the fat. Um, it gets more challenging as you get into other diseases like, like heart disease or liver disease, uh, kidney or lung disease. You're not going to biopsy those in a human who's alive, obviously. Um, and so, and then in that case, you're looking for a, basically a signature, a constellation of senescent cell markers, which there are, there's about 60 markers. And so uh, the view is that you would take basically a signature of those, of those markers and look at them and say, okay, from the blood, which is a proxy now to the organ, did we see a reduction overall in the, in the series of markers? So that's, it's not a perfect um, solution for that uh, in a human, but at the end of the day, what I tell people is, look, it doesn't, senescence is really part of the story and it's really critical to the aging biology, but ultimately what anyone cares about is, did we make the disease quantitatively better in ways that we know are real or not? Which diseases? Yeah, so we, we've tested, so far we've tested lung fibrosis um, and we've tested um, diabetes in the context of metabolic disease. And in both indications, we've shown in animals that we can resolve fibrosis um, in a lung of a mouse. We can, we can give it very severe fibrosis. And then once we treat the animals, um, you see about 10 days after the treatment, the fibrosis um, is resolved about 70 to 75%. Um, in metabolic disease, we've shown also that um, when you induce, you, you basically give mice a high-fat Western diet. They become very obese. They have lots of inflammation, lots of senescence in the adipose tissue. Um, but when you, when you remove the senescent cells from the adipose tissue, um, their insulin resistance improves, their glucose tolerance improves, and as I showed uh, this morning, the, A1, the HbA1c levels will improve for about two months, um, if not more, from a single dose. So you get a nice, long-term, durable effect with this approach. And, and what you're doing is it's, you're removing a very inflammatory cell type that's driving a lot of different pleiotropic um, disease pathologies. And so when you get rid of that kind of source that has, is very, very pathological, um, it allows the body to essentially restore itself. How is the application an injection? Uh, subcutaneous um, is one of the ways you can do it. Um, there are other ways to do it, but um, subcutaneous is, is one way, and it's systemic. So you're going you're to see the uptake of the drug in different organs. And I think that's a good thing, um, one, because the safety signals are, 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 so, are very good to date, um, and two, because as you age, you know, you're not going to have, typically you're not going to have one single disease, you're going to have senescent cells kind of throughout your body. And so a systemic approach allows you to remove these senescent cells in multiple organs um, with a single dose. Do we have an idea for humans, for the yeah. dose? Uh, the, how much or? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah we, in, in the studies I showed this morning, we, we dosed around a little under one milligram per kilogram. Um, so, you know, it's just, it's a, it'll be eventually be a liquid injection and that's, yeah. And so not a high dose at all. I think a lot of drugs that, you know, people take right now are 70, you know, 70 milligrams twice a day or even more twice a day. Um, this would be, you know, one injection about 0.8 mg per kg. I'm um, given every few months. And your med medical treatment will take seven to 10 years because it has surpassed the regulatory hurdles. Yeah, I think once you get into clinical studies, you have five to seven years um, to get to a phase three if, if everything goes according to plan. So it's not quick, um, but during that time, you know, you can, you can think about, there's arguably patients you're treating that are in need in your clinical studies. And then typically in the context of a, of a business setting, you might think that, you know, pharma companies will want to partner you with you once they see that the safety signal is clean, but also the efficacy looks to be promising as well. Do we have an idea for the name, for the product? Um, you know, right now we just call it DCD32580. <laughs> I, I haven't thought about uh, the name yet, but I'm sure someday some pharma company will tell me what the name should be. An apple from Decidious. Yes, maybe. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.